So dealing with dates can sometimes be challenging using SQL. So I'll give you an example. Maybe what we want to do is extract a part from a date or a timestamp. Like maybe we want the year from a longer date, like 2011 from the full date, which is January 8th, 2011. Okay. So let me give you a few functions that will help a lot as you're dealing with dates when you write your SQL statements. So the first function is extract. And it's similar to date part if you've heard of that before. But like the example, this is going to extract the specified date or time from a date, time, or timestamp. So let me give you an example. So let's say um, we have a list of orders and the timestamp for those orders. And what we want to do is from that timestamp, extract the hour. So in this example, in the results, I see my timestamp. And then what the extract function has done is pulled out the hour. Maybe there's cases where we want to just count the number of orders by hour. We could use this to do that. Here's another example. Maybe we want to pull out the day. So we have this timestamp. We want to pull out the day like the 6th, the 12th, the 21st, and so on. We could also use the month, right? In this case, it's pulling out January, then March, then July, so 1, 3, 7, and so on. We could also do the year. In this case, it's all the same, but it's pulling out the year. Or we can do the quarter. So in this case, the quarter looks at the month and what um, quarter that month is in. And so then once we do this, we can take the results that we've extracted and use it for grouping or, or something else. The next function is date trunk, which is a little bit similar, but it's going to truncate a date, time, or timestamp to a specified position. So here's an example. Let's use this same scenario. Where we've got a list of orders with a timestamp for those orders. And what we want to do is truncate the timestamp to the year. And so what this is going to do is start with the year, so truncate it to the year, and everything else after that is going to be the first uh, month, day, second of that year, and so on. So it's truncating it backward. It's shorting, shortening it, if you will. And then if we're doing the month, it's going to truncate it to the year and the month, so it gives us month-level detail. But after that, like the day, the minute, the hour, are always the first of that thing. And then we could go a little deeper here and say we want to truncate it to the day. So in this case, we're just getting the, the granularity of the date, but the hours, the minutes, the seconds, it's just um, kind of zeroed out there. And then the next function I wanted to talk through was date diff. Okay, so we talked about um, date part or extract and date trunk. Now this is date diff. So this is going to calculate the difference between two dates, times, or timestamps. So here's an example. Let's say we have two timestamps. Maybe one's like the start of something or start of a process, and the next is the end of it. So we can use select, in this case, date diff. And then we select the granularity, how we want to measure the difference. So maybe we want the, the difference in minutes between these two timestamps. And we'll just call it the difference. That's the result. And so what we're going to get in this case is 35 minutes. So the difference between these two timestamps, they're on the same year, month, and day. But the timestamp or the time is 35 minutes in difference. And then we could also use second here and the number of seconds difference, and it would be that in this case. You could still use all of the other measurements. So basically for all of these functions, you can use year, month, day, hour, minute, assuming you have that level of detail, like a full timestamp instead of just a date. So there's a lot of similarities between these functions, but it should help us when we're trying to deal with dates as we write our SQL statements in response to business questions we're trying to answer. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the subscribe button. And if you're interested in a SQL cheat sheet, you can find one over at codybaldwin.com.